colleagues. Thank you for visiting us uh, this session. Uh, I have uh, two remarks before I end. Uh, one of them is that I changed, uh, changed the title a little bit. So it's about the influence of stereotypes and techniques on the reproduction of landscape images. In particular, presenting an alternative method, method of analyzing multifarious Unibet pictures. And I will explain what Unibets are later on. But first of all, I would like to uh, explain my structure of my presentation. I will uh, give a uh, short introduction on how this research came about, because it was part of a course at my uh, graduation. Um, then I'll uh, present different options of analyzing uh, pictures of the landscape, but especially of human beds. Uh, I will present the source of material I used to uh, apply my method, my alternative method. I have some conclusions to share with you, and uh, I obviously want to tell why it is socially relevant to uh, take this approach into consideration in our field. And uh, the next uh, mark, remark I want to make is that I saw the session title and the topic, and it was about uh, spatial uh, influences and spatial relevance. And uh, maybe I'm a bit of an oddity uh, with this perspective <coughs> on the images, but uh, I. This morning I received another paper from the same course from a colleague of mine that will uh, explain why my method had, could have a uh, spatial uh, influence. So I hope to convince you with that. Well, first of all, what is a unibet? I don't think that any one of you know what it is because it's a really a Dutch phenomenon. And uh, it's a the international name or category is the megaliths, so it's about uh, big rocks and stone from the archaeological uh, archive. And they are mostly in the northern uh, provinces of the Netherlands. Um, as I said, the reason that I did this uh, course, well, of the, this research was a course that, was, uh, that I had to do for my uh, research master, and it was about the interpretation and approaches of the landscape and the professor he showed us this picture so this is the uh, archaeological artifact and I put a mark through it because it shouldn't be about the artifact itself but the way it was represented or how people looked at it or anything uh, the students wanted to discuss so we had one object and several different uh, topics were used to look at this topic and I chose the one I will explain later. My purpose was to uh, analyze what we can find out about various multifarious types of images of a similar uh, archaeological object and from uh, cultural uh, and art history you have several options to analyze uh, pictures and images of whatever, and also landscape, landscape options. First of all is realism, and then you look at the picture and compare it with reality and try to answer uh, how close it is to the reality, physical, physical, mathematical reality. The second one is symbolism. You look at uh, specific objects on the picture and try to uh, grasp what it means in concreto order. Uh, in the abstract sense, and uh, the alternative approach I wanted to do was the one I named stereotypes and techniques, and it consists of three, uh, three different kinds of questions you have to ask at each uh, picture. So it's a really in-depth inquiry of the, uh, each image. Well, the method was inspired by the famous art historian uh, Ernst Gombrich and like-minded scholars. And uh, it says something about uh, the way conventions, cultural stereotypes of things, and also techniques to make the picture influence the result. And the example he uses is the example with a person's identity. If you have experienced any bureaucracy in your life, you know that your identity is reduced to age, sex, occupation, uh, living place, etc. So the reality is reduced. And he says exactly the same thing happens when an artist or a painter or a, an amateur photographer tries to capture the, the reality, something similar happen, happens. 
because if we use this as a paint roller, the artist will see surfaces. So he will make surfaces. Well, instead, if he uses a pencil, he will see the same reality with lines, because that's what he is able to get on the uh, screen or on the picture through uh, that technique or that instrument. To go slightly further into detail about the stereotypes, uh, I used another um, scholar, and the scholar was uh, also a comic um, maker, so he made a comic about the yeah, th theoretical, conceptual, and uh, research objectives. Objection, uh, he was uh, trying to research, and this is one of those pictures from the comic, and he uh, argues that you can reduce a face until the essence of the face to recognize it still as a face and not as a circle with some dots. So that's why this image is in the presentation. Like I said, um, it's a really time consuming endeavor to analyze uh, pictures in this way because you have to ask three different questions. First of all, do the techniques, instruments, and materials explain how the picture looks? looks like. Second, what similarities can be distinguished from the total corpus of multivarious Hillebet pictures? Third, what kind of stereotype remains when we reduce the Hillebet pictures to the essence, the essential necessary to recognize it as such? Because if I show you something like a picture of a tree, it means that there is something in there that, that makes us think it's a tree. For the case study of the Unibets, uh, I have collected several uh, images about these uh, archaeological artifacts that were on, on the whole time span of the pictures that were available. So we have engravings, mostly from the 17th century. We have paintings from the 19th century, uh, especially the Hague School. It's some uh, art uh, movement that went out to the, the wild landscape and to paint it. Drawings. Photos, black and white, mostly on post, uh, postcards. And I've looked at map symbols from the 18th century until uh, today to look at the symbols that were used for uh, this artifact. And I do not have the time here to uh, go into detail to uh, all those kinds of different approaches from art history, but I will uh, give some examples based on the pictures I show. Well, this is one of the very earliest uh, 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 images of the, the artifact. And <coughs> as you can see, based on the, the, the question, how, how real does it look? Well, um, in my opinion, it doesn't look real because it's really strange um, formation and it is really sharp and it's really a uh, strange object, in fact. Well, if you use the approach I am uh, pleading for, then you could also say, what happened with the engraving? Did the engraving limit uh, the maker of the picture to uh, make round shapes or uh, more accurate forms? Second, this uh, second example was a painting, and in this painting you really could see the uh, could, could explain the example of looking at it through the symbolism, the, the birds and the, the dark uh, colors help you to, to believe it's a, grave, a graveyard and feel like dark, dead and uh, make a look um, not very nice feelings. But through my approach you could ask why does it look uh, like that? If it is paint then uh, the painting can um, limit it the, the artist to produce it in a certain way. Photographs, these were a collection of the University of Groningen in the Netherlands and they have collected like uh, hundreds of postcards of these objects and uh, then again that the conventions or the, uh, uh, let me think, the, uh, the ratio between height and length of the picture makes the maker uh, to position himself in front of the uh, artifact. Because if it was, for example, the other way around, the, the, the height 
being longer than the, the length, then perhaps the position where the makers would have positioned them would be different. This is uh, a series of uh, the several uh, map symbols that were used uh, during uh, the time span of 18th century until now. And uh, that uh, is also interesting because they, they become, what you could say, more realistic, but they, they become more uh, advanced in a way. So with um, this inquiry being done with several multifarious uh, pictures, I have several conclusions. Um, images are not unambitiously because um, they are layered and that means that the approaches I named uh, were, are all useful or needed to grasp the meaning of those pictures. Um, they are highly influenced by stereotypes because um, all the pictures more or less have a common denominator when it is about the uh, perspective. Um, and how could we describe the core visual characteristic of this specific uh, art, archaeological artifact in the Hildebrand? It's at least three objects with at least one on top of them. Could be more, but at least there are three kinds of uh, objects in a specific uh, ratio and relation to each other. So how does it work? Um, I've made two examples. Um, the start point at the first is with the prison that um, we all have in our minds cultural stereotypes that we think of, that we test uh, images on. And uh, through the instruments and the techniques used by an artist, the exact outcome of those uh, pictures could differ quite, quite a lot. And uh, the second one uh, is about that we are exposed as persons, as uh, scholars, but also as uh, normal human, human beings to multivarious pictures of anything we, we have. And there we, from that we, uh, well, we make a stereotype in our mind that, that is fluid. And until the moment that the picture is made, only then it's solid. And that is a process that, that goes on and on. And now there's something about social relevance because this, these are pictures that are taken from Google uh, Images. And you can see, and uh, I will show the, the email I received this morning from a colleague. He has plotted with Google Map the position from where the pictures were made. And that's the spatial dimension then of my presentation. That you can um, see there are specific standpoints where the majority of the people make pictures and they want to make pictures that are in line with what they have in, a, in their mind. And there are always exceptions, obviously. There's always some strange guy who takes some really different approach, a really different perspective. But this is um, a very strong example of how it works. And that is, uh, I believe, I don't uh, believe, also the social relevance, because we as scholars uh, also use pictures, but merely, mostly as illustrations. And we contribute to uh, the corpus of uh, the different images, and we also thus um, influence what kind of stereotype people have about uh, these kinds of uh, objects through the images. Even people who have never been there have an idea about those uh, artifacts. Oh, that's for something later. And this is to explain that it is, I believe, with a lot of uh, kinds of landscape objects that we have in our mind an idea about what it should look like. And if it's not maybe in politics or something else, that if it's not the way it should look like, that then people get uh, angry or confused or etc. Before I go to the questions or remarks, I'll go to the, um, the other slide. <coughs> the 
Is this it from my colleague? For every uh, one of those objects, there are about a uh, hundred in the Netherlands. He has plotted from uh, the hundred pictures where the people were in, in Google Maps to make those pictures. So at last there is a spatial dimension in my presentation. Thank you very much.